Our reading this morning is taken from the book of Ephesians, chapter 1, from verse 11 to 14. That is Ephesians 1, 11 to 14. In him we are also chosen, having been predestined according to the plan of him who works out everything in conformity with the purpose of his will, in order that we who were the first to put our hope in Christ might be for the praise of his glory. And you also were included in Christ when you heard the message of truth, the gospel of your salvation. When you believed, you were marked in him with the seal, the promised Holy Spirit, who is a deposit guaranteeing our inheritance until the redemption of those who are God's possession to the praise of his glory. This is the word of the Lord. guys and thank you Nemi beautiful reading and beautiful introduction um hi firstly big shout out to you guys in the room it's great to be here this morning and to those of you guys who are online uh particularly big shout out to all of my fans and uh by my fans by my fans I mean my mum can everyone say hi Debs Well, that happened. Um, And so today, as Stephen said, we're going to be continuing on in this series of battles and blessings as we check out this book of Ephesians. And last week, we learned that we can simultaneously walk through some of life's biggest blessings whilst facing battles, both at the same time. Almost like having one foot on top of the mountain and one foot in the valley simultaneously. And so we'll be going through what that looks like over the next few weeks, and so keep coming back. We're in for an absolute treat. But today I was tasked with one of the greatest blessings of all time in talking about that. And so today we're going to be talking about the blessing of salvation. And uh, I think I must be, you know, the favorite, because what a privilege to be able to speak on that today. Um, That or I was the only one available. Um, But today I want to look at three things. So what is this blessing How do we get it? And finally, once we have it, what do we do with it? And so to begin, what is a blessing? I wonder what comes to mind when I ask you that question. Uh, For me, a blessing would be finding a new pair of trainers that I want on Vinted for half the price. Check them out. (laughs) Can absolutely confirm. I'm just hoping to make it onto um, Preachers with Sneakers Instagram. Uh, You search that one. Um, Or for me, maybe I think about uh, Instagram posts with kind of hashtag blessed. And a fun fact, if you search that on Instagram, there's 151 million tags or posts with the tags of hashtag blessed. And most of them, interestingly, are footballers scoring incredible goals or uh, a rich person getting a really fancy car or maybe the kind of picture perfect family photo. And I think that's probably what I thought blessings were. I thought it was getting everything I dreamed of. The dream partner and job and house and life just going pretty well. And maybe, if I'm honest, I probably did associate it a little bit with religion, mostly because their hashtag blessed caption would come uh, followed by hashtag God's plan. And so I think I kind of picked that up, but I didn't grow up around the church. Neither of my parents were Christians I'd never been to church, and so some of this language was a little bit lost on me. And so when I was 21 and I was invited to church for the first time, I was just getting to know Jesus, and I was a little bit confused because my life wasn't immediately perfect. Like this handsome person didn't just walk up in front of me and announce themselves to be my spouse, (laughs) or I didn't get the dream house in the best location. And in fact, actually, in many ways, life got a little bit harder. And so I began to think that maybe these people that I was following on Instagram maybe weren't telling the truth, or maybe they were just getting it a little bit wrong. And as I opened the Bible for the first time and I began to read the words of Jesus, I was even more confused. Like, what? He doesn't promise us these things or the Disney love story, or even that life would just be a a little bit easier. But he did talk about blessings. And in fact, in Matthew 5, Jesus says, blessed are the meek, blessed are the lowly, blessed are those who are poor in spirit, blessed are those who are mourning. He even goes on to explicitly say, probably don't expect those material blessings here on earth. 
He tells us in Luke 14 to go and to throw the most extravagant party ever, but not to invite the rich and the highly esteemed, but instead to bless the poor with an invitation to this party. Why? Because they cannot repay you. And I'm like, brilliant, great. So what is in it for me? And I guess I realized that I didn't see these influencers posting pictures of like a parking fine with hashtag blessed on Instagram or lol, just lost my job, hashtag blessed, hashtag God's plan. Like, <laughs> if you're here today and you're under the pretense that you might get a free car, I'm sorry, not today, maybe next week, I guess, come back. Um, but I started asking those questions of what on earth have I got myself into? Why would I bother following this Jesus guy. And Stephen kicked us off last week looking at the few, first few verses in Ephesians, uh, a letter that the Apostle Paul, who um, is one of the big boys in the Bible, uh, he's writing to a church in Ephesus, which is modern-day Turkey, and he writes, we have been blessed in the heavenly realms with every spiritual blessing in Christ Jesus. Every spiritual blessing. And last week, Stephen took us through what that means. And if you haven't caught that talk yet, do you find that on YouTube or Spotify or whatever you find yourselves uh, finding your podcast on. And some of these spiritual blessings include God planning us from the very beginning of all creation. God choosing us. Jesus redeeming us and adopting us and ensuring that we become heirs to his great inheritance. God blesses us with abounding grace, with forgiveness, with mercy, with purpose, with love, and so much more. And we're reminded that in these times of battles, it's important to remember that we have been given every spiritual blessing, ESB. And uh, Stephen, at the end of his talk, uh, joked, maybe, maybe, that we should get it tattooed on ourselves. And so... Um, just kidding, just kidding. <laughs> We're not a cult, I promise. Um, but God blesses us with all of these spiritual and eternal blessings, many of which we won't understand the fullness of whilst here on earth. They're more about the kind of infinite and eternal blessings. If you were to put all of the richest people in the world into a room, it would pale in comparison to even the lowliest of Jesus' followers. And so in today's passage, there is so much to unpack. I don't know about you guys, but I found myself reading this and was thinking, what on earth is going on? Like, what is this guy chatting about? And so we're going to narrow it down just to a couple of verses and really get stuck into it. And so at verse 13, we're going to read it again. It says, And you also were included in Christ when you heard the message of truth, the gospel of your salvation. When you believed, you were marked in him with a seal, the promised Holy Spirit, who is a deposit guaranteeing our inheritance until the redemption of those who are God's possession. As soon as I read these verses, uh, all I could think of was a kind of famous 70s Motown song, Looking to you, Hamptons. Uh, anyone guess what it is? Come on, someone give it to me. Here I am, baby. Come on. <laughs> Very good. Um, never did I think I would sing on stage whilst the camera was pointing at me, but again, that happened. But as I was reading this, all I could think about was here I am, baby, saved, sealed, delivered. I'm yours. You'll never forget now what these spiritual blessings are because that's going to stick in your minds, I hope. And, um, and maybe this is where Stevie got his idea from because it's exactly what Paul is talking about in this passage. That we are saved by Jesus through his perfect life, through his death on the cross where he took the consequence of our brokenness, of our sin upon himself and died for us to save us that we are sealed by the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit has been given to us as a pledge that Jesus will come back again, that you were marked with him a seal, a stamp, a promise, 
a deposit guaranteeing our inheritance, an almost down payment that is proof and a promise that Jesus will be back. But this down payment isn't just like a small piece of the puzzle. This is God giving us himself, God's very spirit coming to live in us and dwell in us. It's incredible. And finally, we are delivered. We are redeemed by Christ. We are brought from slavery into freedom. We are freed of our debt and we are led into Christ. Our lives are lived in him. And Paul loves this language, in Christ. Our lives are lived in him. We are joined in him. We die in him. We rise again in him. It's an association and an identification. It's a metaphor for this proximity. We couldn't get any closer to God than in him and he in us. And this isn't just a theory or some kind of big picture philosophy or even a doctrine or theology. This is the reality of where our everyday lives are lived. He becomes the circumference of our lives. We are now defined in relation to him. We're not just individual subjects anymore. We are saved, sealed, delivered. We're his. And we're going to get just a little bit deeper into one of these. And this is the blessing of salvation. What does it mean to be saved? Verse 13, you were included in Christ when you heard the message of truth, the gospel of your salvation. And so firstly, in order to receive this blessing, we need to hear this message. And what is this message? It's the message of truth, the gospel. It's the gospel in the Greek that Paul is writing is euangelion, which could be translated into good news. And I don't know about you, but sometimes I think we need to get a little bit more like expressive with our language. You know, for me, when I think about good, I'm like, thumbs up, like good times, good, that was a good dinner. And it kind of means fine, really, doesn't it? But I think good isn't a good enough word to describe the weight and the magnificence of what God has achieved in us with Jesus, the gospel. This isn't just good news. Good news is that you get a pair of trainers half price on Vinted, or that you get a pay rise at work, or there's a new coffee machine, or you get a first at university. This is mind-blowing, world-shattering, life-changing news. There's nothing quite like it. This is the best news this world has ever heard. It's the greatest news, the greatest joy, the most glorious thing that we can be saved. This is the word of truth. And it only takes a second for me to look around some of the people that I meet who, if we're all being honest, we're desperate for something more, something authentic and significant that can change our lives. And here it is, the blessing of salvation, the gospel. The gospel of the kingdom of God, the gospel of Jesus Christ, the king of all creation, where the last shall be first and the first shall be last, and where love looks like dying for your enemies. It's confusing and it's confronting and it's compelling. Salvation. It's a bit of a churchy word, a bit of a religious word, I guess, but it's an absolute belter. And in the original language, it's translated from sozo, which means to be made whole. That all of us have this kind of Jesus-shaped hole in our hearts and in our lives. And we can't be made whole by any amount of success or love or drink or drugs or romance or parties or travel or anything else. But the good news is that we can be saved, that we are rescued, that we are delivered, that we can be made free and whole in him. We can become who we're made to be. That there is a new way of life. That all of our sin and our brokenness can be wiped clean in an instant. That we can be free of guilt. That you are forgiven. That we can forgive the future is open to us, that we are brought into a relationship with the one who made us and our lives are being framed by being in him. What a thing. What a love. What a gift. 
And it is a gift by nature because it's all grace. This is not anything that we can achieve on our own. And no wonder Paul goes on to say that we are going to be the praise of God's glory. He loves us that much. And so we have this message, the word of truth, the gospel, the gospel of salvation that's been recorded in the scriptures in this book, has been transmitted by the apostles for over 2,000 years and for the church forevermore. And it comes to us written down and it comes to us spoken out. And maybe you're here today and you have always known it. Or maybe recently a friend has shared it with you or you've heard it on TikTok or Perhaps this is the first time you're ever hearing this. The blessing of salvation, that Jesus died for us. He lived, he died, he rose again for us. This is a word that can be heard. And when we hear this word, we are confronted with a decision. Will we ignore it? Will we think about it? Will we reject it or hate it? Or will we receive it? Paul here talks about believing. And believing is the act of saying yes. It's saying that we have heard this news, that we receive it and we believe it to be true. We believe this word to be the means by which we are saved. And we say, yes, we want this. We need this. We recognize that without it, we are totally lost. And we open our hearts and our hands and our lives. And we ask God to enter in. And we put our trust in him. And we say yes to God, who has already said yes to you. But it's not just giving a nod or simply giving an approval. It's a giving of ourselves. It's saying, yes, I am completely, deeply sold out, sincerely, abandoned to you. I am completely, freely, hands to the skies, enamored by God. I am completely, deeply, I don't care who sees me or what people think of me, in love with Jesus. And sometimes this is a journey, and it's a slow journey, a gradual one of getting to know him his words, his ways, and that is so okay. Like, There's so much space for people to be here and to be on that journey. Come to Alpha, bring your questions, your doubts, your curiosity. Come and try it out. The gospel that is a word of truth, a word told because of actions that Jesus did over 2,000 years ago, 1,000 miles away, this word establishes the most important relationship that you will ever have in our lives. And the challenge presented before us today is, have we believed it? Have we received it? Have we said yes to his yes? And are we experiencing this incredible reality for ourselves in our day to day? And I promise you, it's the best decision I've ever made. And maybe you've been following Jesus for years. But perhaps maybe this mystery and the awesomeness of your salvation has almost become second nature to you. Maybe through this message, like, yeah, I I get it, Jody. This isn't new. But today, I believe that Jesus wants to remind us of those early moments of falling in love with him, to know afresh the beauty of this blessing. Or perhaps you're here today, and you're confronted with the first time with this decision. Will you believe it? And we'll have a chance shortly to respond if that's the case. So as we hear this message of salvation, we're confronted with a decision. Will we believe it? And then just say, you happen to say yes, or maybe you've already said yes. It's like, great, we've got it. Spiritual blessings, nailed it. Like, no, it goes further than this. We tell it. We hear it, we believe it, we tell it. How else will anyone get this blessing if we don't share it, if they don't hear it? We are blessed to be a blessing. Stick that in a caption for your hashtags on Instagram next time. Blessed to be a blessing. Psalm 67 begins with the psalmist praying, God bless me. I'm going to read just the first couple of verses. He says, May God be gracious to us and bless us and make his face shine on us so that your ways may be known on earth, 
your salvation among all nations. What he's saying here is, God bless me. I want them to see your delight in me. And then they will truly see what you're like. And if they see what you're like, then salvation will come to them and all nations. Your grace is an irresistible grace, and I want them to see what it is. It's a beautiful prayer. God bless me so that I can be a blessing. It's not God bless me so that I can get all of these nice things or maybe just become a little bit spiritually fat. But it's God bless me so that your salvation will come to all of those around me. And I am so glad that someone took the time to share their blessing of salvation with me. My life was turned upside down on its head just a few years ago whilst in my third year of university when someone told me for the first time about Jesus. I didn't grow up as a Christian or uh, even going to harvest things. I don't know what kids do at schools, but like I didn't go to these chapels or I hadn't ever heard the gospel. And I'd got to the age of 21 without really knowing who Jesus is or, or even what he was supposed to have done. And I had had an all right time. You know, I'd been doing well at university. I was playing sport. I was loving my life. I was enjoying partying and finding friends and traveling and all of the worldly things that were before me. And then things started to go slightly wrong. Some of these kind of earthly blessings were kind of being taken away. I picked up a career-defining injury, and I had ch- some of my friendships and relationships had changed, and suddenly my entire future was up in arms and questioned. And someone took the time to invite me to church. I didn't know he was a Christian. I just thought he was a nice guy. And uh, I went out one night and did some things and got home at 5 a.m. And uh, I was in an absolute state. And I walked in the front door and I was bawling my eyes out. And um, I wasn't really a crier, but this guy had waited up until 5 a.m. just to make sure I got home safe and to make sure I was okay. And as I sat there and I shared what was going on with him, he just held me and cried with me. And then at the end, he offered to pray for me. And I was like, no. (laughs) Um, In not so polite ways. Uh, And actually, I was quite angry with him. I was like, I've just told you all of these things in my life that are going wrong. And yet, you want to pray for me. Like, if there is a God, then why is he pulling these tricks? Like, what's going on here? And I was so angry. Um, and he said, okay, don't, like, don't worry about it. But um, by this time, it was like seven in the morning. He was like, I'm going to go to bed now because I'm meant to be going to church tomorrow. If there's any chance that you want to come with me, um, then you're very welcome. And uh, again, I told him, no, thank you, uh, in, again, not so polite ways, and went to bed. And um, I couldn't sleep. There was something in me that was stirring in my heart. And usually I was out like a light. But I couldn't help but think that maybe, just maybe, I had arrived to the answers of life's most important questions without actually giving it much thought. And so that following day, uh, he was sat on the driveway with the ignition going, and I kind of sloped into the front seat, hood up, and uh, didn't say anything for the 40 minutes that it took to get to church, and um, walked in, and it was much like this, lots of people, lots of young people that seemed happy, and if not happy, then they had friends around them, and it was nice and everyone was nice to me and it was weird and they gave me like coffee when I walked in and like what are you trying to achieve here sir and um, I heard the gospel for the first time I heard what Jesus had done for me on the cross I heard that I could find freedom and salvation in him I heard that there were blessings far greater than the ones here on earth available to me with a yes I heard that even though life might not be easy and good, that I will have someone there with me every step of the way, cheering me on, saying, I love you, I'm for you, I'm with you. And I didn't understand in that moment what it was mean. It meant to be like a sinner who was saved. I thought I was a pretty good egg. I didn't understand what it meant to be wholeheartedly in love with Jesus. But I knew that in that moment, my life was different. I heard it. I believed it. And I will spend the rest of my days telling it. Because this good news, 
This good news of salvation, this blessing that God has given me is far too good to keep to myself. It has given me every spiritual blessing under the sun and it's turned my life around and I believe it can turn yours around too. I thank God every day for my salvation because it's the only thing that keeps me going in hard times. And you'll know better than me, times get hard. Life isn't easy. I've had a really tough couple of months and these blessings have seemed far from real if I'm being entirely honest. And I've had to kind of wrestle with this fact that, do I believe this enough to stand before you today and say it with my chest? Can I say it with integrity? But I can say with a firm confidence that facing these battles with Christ is far better than facing them on my own. And so in Jesus, we are blessed with salvation. We hear it, we believe it, we are saved by Jesus, we are sealed by the Holy Spirit, we are delivered by God the Father, we are his. And then we tell it. We here at St. Aldate's, we're blessed to be a blessing. We have the perfect opportunity coming up with Alpha. Who is it that you can invite along? In fact, don't even think who it is. Like, invite everyone along. The beauty of salvation of Jesus, you are a blessed person if you know that truth. Now imagine someone in your life that's perhaps struggling, or they need some hope or love or peace or freedom or all of the things that God gives. Imagine that if over the next nine weeks they could hear this message of truth for the first time and come to believe it. And then their lives are transformed by every spiritual blessing. This is what God is in the business of doing and it's what he charges us to do too. Imagine the impact that it can have on your life. Imagine waking up daily and knowing I am blessed with every spiritual blessing. He is mine and I am his. Imagine the impact that it could have on your colleges, in your workplace, in your schools, in your home. Imagine every university student here in Oxford hearing the gospel of salvation and responding with belief. Imagine what revival could look like here in this church. Imagine what a city full of people who have been saved by Jesus, who have sealed by his spirit and have been delivered into this new kingdom life. Imagine on a Sunday morning, St. Aldate's is overflowing with people because they have received this good gift of salvation, that they are aware that all of the blessings are on offer here, that the Holy Spirit was on the move. Imagine if every church in Oxford was packed to the brim. Imagine the name of Jesus being lifted high over Oxford. Imagine poverty being eradicated, injustice being trampled on. Imagine a united city. Imagine a country saved by Jesus, where our politicians, our leaders, our teachers, our lawyers, our doctors, our bus drivers, that they knew their eternity was set in stone and they could begin living in the life of Jesus right here, right now. Imagine a world who knew this blessing of salvation, who knew peace and true peace among the nations. We can dream big because God is big. He came not just for you or for me, but he came for all of humanity. But it starts here in our hearts when we hear this blessing of salvation, when we hear this gospel truth, and we're faced with the question, will you believe it? Will you receive it? We are blessed to be a blessing. Let's go and tell it to everyone who will listen. In Jesus' name, amen.